Guys, we got a problem. I see this guy. He looks like Ethan. You guys are very sweet, actually. You're very open-minded that you don't care that I do OnlyFans. Last week, you thought that we weren't romantic and you thought our relationship was a sham. He talks like Ethan? Well, all these fucking conservative big brains are all hesitant about vaccinations for some reason. You know, they're such, they're fucking, they're such. <laughs> But that ain't Ethan. Stories, they're young, and also, yeah. James is thinking about which one's cute for him to fuck. This kid looks like he's 12. The fuck? All of these monitors and I still can't see all the bullshit. Today we're searching for Ethan Klein. H3H3. H3H3? H3H3? Has anyone seen my friend Ethan? Ethan! It's so weird. I can't find this guy anywhere. He used to be so recognizable and easy to connect to. And uh, he just disappeared. Wait, what is that? <clears throat> can't be. It's Ethan's beanie. You know, it's not much, but it's all the evidence we got. Let's go. H3H3, you know him, you used to love him, and if you're anything like me, you're probably wondering what the hell happened. This past year, we've seen video. Washed up loser, with a slowly but surely declining podcast audience. After video. Also don't really have sympathy or empathy for those who have made the statements Ethan has made. After video on Ethan. And you talk about what a fucking manipulative, dishonest cunt he is. <laughs> Get him, Tommy! It's really sad to see this community slowly turn on him. If you just look back to 2016, the videos made on H3H3 have such a different tone. H3H3 seems to be this demigod that's descended from the heavens, sharing his fupa with everyone. Lots of fan edits, him acting goofy. He had this amazing balancing act where he was able to look goofy, but still talk about these really tricky subjects in a way that people took seriously, but he wouldn't offend anybody. Whether it's a gambling scam put on by YouTubers, raising money for Humongous, or helping Ken Bone out with his charity efforts, this guy was always making the right move and looking out for the community along the way. The Matt Haas lawsuit is what most people think of when it comes to H3's legacy in our community. Certifying fair use for React commentary is a matter of law. I think that alone permanently places him in the YouTube Hall of Fame, but I also think that overshadows a bit just how tact and precise he was when dealing with sensitive topics that most YouTubers would rather avoid entirely. The 2016 election was polarizing to say the least. <laughs> YouTubers who weren't exactly known for political content started advocating for candidates. There was a lot of controversy and buzzwords being thrown around. H3 decided to take a bit of a different approach when uh, making his election video. Speaker of the House Paul Ryan tweeted out, I want to congratulate Donald Trump on his incredible victory. Speaker of the House Paul Ryan, very important guy. I'm one of the, one of the leaders of the Republican Party. Very important tweet. I wonder what else, what other uh, prominent figures had to say about the election. Clinton supporters also letting their thoughts be heard. Ethan wrote this one. Congrats to everyone who supported Trump. I voted for Hillary, but this is a democracy and I respect the process. Ethan said this. They only showed two tweets the whole fucking program. Paul Ryan and Ethan. Yo, what's up, dude? This guy's opening up with a joke. He's laughing instead of getting overly emotional like many did during the 2016 election. Shit, celebrities were crying. People were crying on Twitter. Everyone was crying. Everyone was crying. Now, now it wasn't some burn down the Capitol outrage, but I mean, it was pretty bad. Trust me. Everyone was so full of emotion and acting ridiculously over the top. Hey, it's right here. It's rape. It's Bill Clinton that says rape. Yet it was the goofs and gaffs guy giving a very tact and well-reasoned response. It became his brand to some degree. We're all Americans, and wanting Trump to do a bad job is like being on an airplane with a bunch of people you dislike and hoping the pilot does a bad job so it crashes and kills everyone on board. And even though I didn't personally vote for Trump, I I'm rooting for him. And that's what made Ethan, H3, really feel so special. He felt like this normal dude that accidentally fell into this place of influence. I mean, shit, the first video on his channel is Ethan talking about his ideal life of being a comedian that tells poop jokes. I feel like I would like to be a comedian, but every time I sit down to write jokes, 
they always end up being about poop. The top comment of that video is so fitting. Oh, Ethan, you've become so much more in a couple of short years. And that was true. H3H3 by this point exposed a fake pranking scene that dominated YouTube for a time, raised over $100,000 for humongous surgery, exposed a legally questionable gambling scheme, and fought and won a lawsuit in the name of fair use for the commentary community. I mean, shit, this guy was throwing his fupa around so much, it caught the eye of the CEO of YouTube. Susan Wojcicki reached out to him. Everywhere I go, I try and meet with creators. Recently, I sat down with a number of creators. Back home, I shared drinks and some honest conversation with Shane Dawson, James Charles, Collins and Devin, Ethan and Hila Klein. It was inspiring to see how all these creators have invested so deeply in YouTube. The feedback I heard from these discussions was important. A top issue was wanting more clarity around community guidelines. Ha! <laughs> That didn't happen. An advertiser-friendly policy, so there's more predictability with monetization and our recommendation system. Ha! That didn't happen! They're frustrated with copyright claims that are less than 10 seconds long or incidental. Well, they still didn't fix that for me, so... Ha! That didn't happen! God, this site sucks. And they say that online harassment from fellow creators is growing and needs to be addressed. Now we started this story looking for Ethan Klein. We followed his exact steps. We checked the vape shop, but Ethan wasn't there. Is it possible that he didn't want to be found or maybe he's on the run? Who knows? Maybe the vape just <laughs> fucking killed him. <laughs> How cool was that? Did that look awesome? We even went to the top of a fucking mountain to try and contact them using smoke signals. Boys, this is our emergency, so we got the most powerful vape we could. We got that all natural churro flavor. <laughs> Hopefully vape nation to these clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Safe to say it Ugh. didn't fucking work. <laughs> Zilch, nada. I'm beginning to worry about what happened to our boy. This prominent figure has just disappeared. So I started to look for suspects. I had a list of a few. Bill Burr was a guy I was really suspect of, but there wasn't any motive. Keemstar was another one I thought could do it. Motive was there, but there was one glaring issue. He's fat. I don't think he could lift his arms above his head. Goku Naru, 2018, a video titled The Death of H3H3 Video Vigilante, claiming it took hundreds of hours to make, was uploaded criticizing H3H3 and what he has become. He's a prime suspect uh, because uh, he literally shoots Ethan in the fucking head in it. <laughs> and then spits on his body, uh, makes it sound like his dad beats him at the end of the video. I'd like to share something my father once told me. Uh, I'd just gotten the shit kicked out of me for bullying my brother. And he said to me, if you're gonna dish it out, you'd better be ready to take it. Uh... Now H3H3 was by no means dead at this point. In fact, I think a lot of the points made in Goku Naru's video were a bit of a stretch. A lot of the arguments were made in bad faith and some of the information was just plain wrong. He shows the infamous DMs of H3H3 talking shit about Pyro with Leafy and then follows it up by saying, This was the first time that we got a good look at the true, jealous, manipulative side of H3H3. This is a pretty bold statement because at least in this example, it's just not true. The full DMs have been available for nearly a year before Goku Naru's video was even made. And if it shows anyone being manipulative, it's Leafy. In fact, those DMs notoriously end with H3 saying, if I have an issue with Pyro, I should confront him about it. Not have you do it on my behalf. I think it shows Ethan having some pretty solid character here and seeing that this was all public information for nearly a year at this point does make me wonder uh, about that hundreds of hours of research claim at the beginning of the video. It, it, it looks a little goofy. So why was this video so successful? It has good production value, it's funny, and although it didn't always give the most convincing examples, it still resonated with how a lot of viewers were feeling at the time. H3H3 was becoming more cynical, more serious, and went from always saying the right thing to often speaking irrationally. It seemed so out of character. James is thinking about which one's cute well, for him to fuck. Oh, this kid looks no. like he's 12. James was lining him up. He's like, mm. <laughs> I guarantee you he made a pass on these young boys. I fucking guarantee it. I fucking guarantee it. Bro, how is this motherfucker not been sued already? Hey, can you say anything once you get Teddy Fresh money? Uh, Ethan Klein, pedophile, 100% proven fact. Every show he just pops up and fucks my brain cells unconsensually. And that's wrong because mentally... I'm only 12 years old. What exactly does the Catholic Church do except rape kids? <laughs> I mean, what exactly would you say you do, Catholic Church? Catholic
Catholic Church, pedophiles, all of them, all they're doing is raping kids. Can you imagine if you did that with any other group of people? Jews, all of them, all of the Jews, all they're doing is being very nice, uh, the good people. Uh, I, I love you, honey. <laughs> like these huge black dudes, and they're all strapped. They were all black. There was like 10. Are I'm they? just saying, they were, every single one of them was black. Okay. I don't even... I don't even pay attention to call color. or anything. If there's eight dudes <laughs> on security and they're all black, I think that's worth noting. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but uh, Ethan isn't exactly being a wordsmith here. Uh, he looked awkward in interviews, often letting the mood sour. These are definitely the most infamous examples, but it became such a common occurrence he even acknowledged it. And the Wall Street Journal thing and stuff like this where I kind of just handled things in a really overconfidence, really thinking that I can mm -hmm. take on the world and not and not do wrong. And then when I end up fucking up, it finds out, it comes out. Then when I get criticized, I completely shut down. I give Ethan a lot of props. It takes a lot of humility to be vulnerable on camera like that. Ethan Klein is a guy who's faced a lot of criticism. Some of it fair, some of it not so much. But even he's acknowledged some of the criticism. And you gotta respect that. This happened in 2018, so has he changed since then? Anyway, this guy's a, this guy's apparently like a straight up a predator, bro. I don't know if he said that he sent nudes back. He's, yes, he did. He said he was flirting back. Flirting back. He didn't say he sent okay, nudes. Okay, correct the record, bitch. <laughs> the guy, the 16-year-old showed them. You didn't say bitch to me. No, not you. I was okay. talking to Charles. Guarantee you he made a pass on these young boys. I fucking guarantee it. Sue me. So what happened to Ethan Klein? Was it Goku Naru in his video? Was it uh, the H3 podcast and Ethan's unfiltered takes? Or was it the vape? <laughs> or was it because he started the notorious Klein crime family? You gotta tear me apart, Lisa!